Hello, everyone. Welcome to Peer-to-Peer Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Willie Morales, and on today's show, we'll be talking about the fate of your credit card. Use it or lose it. But before we do, today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash peer-to-peer real estate and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Download the title for free and start listening. It's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com slash peer, the number two peer real estate. Before we talk about the fate of your credit card, I wanted to talk about something in the news. Now, I don't know if you guys, I mean, if you live in New York, I'm pretty sure you heard about this, but nationally, uh, the New York City Housing Authority uh, in, what was it, December of last year, 2018, and I'll put the on the show notes the article. Uh, let me give her credit. It's Nicole Brown. And NYCHA, which stands, which stands for New York City Housing Authority, was named the worst landlord on Letitia James's annual watch list. Now, she has a watch list of every year, every year and she pretty much outs uh, horrible landlords. And then she writes an article about it. So this year, or for 2018, the New York City Housing Authority was named the worst landlord. I lived in hot public housing. And I'm telling you, you know, you could blame them, blame maybe the lack of money. Maybe you could blame some of the people that live in these uh, 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 projects or complexes, whatever you want to call them. But most of the time it's filthy, uh, dirty. Um, Sometimes uh, when I used to live there, I didn't see uh, someone clean the building for days. You know, the floors are filthy, the piss in the elevators, and it just gets worse and worse. And as of this recording, uh, I think her name is Lynn Patton. Uh, she works for, I think, the, for NYCHA. I think she's one of the upper management. She's been staying in one of the NYCHA houses, I think, in the Bronx. And so she's seen what's going on. But she knows, in, the, in one of the articles I read... That is pretty much just cosmetic work. Uh, they know she's coming, so they're doing everything they can to f- uh, clean the how uh, the houses. I mean, I'm sorry, the the building, the uh, mop the floors, buff the floors, whatever they got to do. But it's again, it's just cosmetics work for a little bit. Who knows what happens once she leaves? And you know, there are a lot of good people that live in these uh, these projects. They need it because it's low income. You're talking about people that might make thirty, forty thousand a year. Uh, you got all these new buildings that are going up um, that you need to make <laughs> almost six figures to live in. You know, some a lot of these people are being priced out and they're ending up somewhere in the Bronx. You know, I hate to say it, but it's true. And that's what pretty much New York real estate is coming down to. Is uh, the people in Manhattan, all the upper echelon of business and salaries and every, every everywhere else is you know, seems going to be for low income, and which is not fair. I mean, Manhattan, uh, I live in Manhattan. I love the city. I love being here. But, um, you know, you got to have two or three jobs to just make ends meet to live in Manhattan. Anyway, so I'll definitely put that on the show notes. Again, I just want to reiterate that NYCHA, according to Letitia James's watch list, was named the worst landlord. And that's sad. Anyway, that being said, I wanted to talk about credit cards. Uh, again, on the show notes, and I want to give, uh, um, say hi to Lindsay uh, Consco. And I mean by hi is, you know what, Lindsay, you wrote a great article about the credit card being canceled. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So she wrote this in January. So I'll put that on the show notes also besides the, uh, the NYCHA news. So I wanted to talk about the credit cards. I've had two, I got two that were taken away from me. One is from uh, Valley National Bank, and one was from Chase Bank. Now, let me go start with the Valley National Bank. Now, I've been a customer since, I think, 2011, and I have a business account there. And I think maybe within six months to a year, give or take, I got a business credit card. Now, and I've, I've used it. I, I purchased some items that... I needed uh, for business, but over the last year, year and a half, maybe, might be longer, I'm not sure, I never kept track, I stopped using it. I was paying down the debt that was on the card, and all of a sudden, one day, and I don't remember getting any type of letter, when I got my bank statement uh, on one of the months, 
I didn't see the credit card there. You know, they usually tell you what's your balance and how much you can use uh, all, uh, pretty much in every statement or all the statements that you get. I didn't see it. So I remember I went to one of the uh, local branches and they told me to call uh, the credit card number in the back of the, of the business card, which I still had. But um, I, no explanation was given to me. They just took it. Then I got Chase card. A Chase card that I had since 1990. This was my first credit card that I ever had. Right? So I'm talking not early 1990 or middle 1990, whenever it was. I was like 27, 28 years old. I was a late bloomer when it came to, biz, to uh, getting a credit card. And I've used, obviously I used it throughout the years, but over the last three to four years, what I've done was done balance transfers. You know, if I had a, a high, uh, high interest rate on one card, I transferred it over to, to the Chase card that I, that I had. And that's why I don't have to pay any interest. I'm just paying principal only. And that's what I did. In 2018, I just kept on whatever uh, balance I had at the time, I just paid it off. Well, with Chase, at least I got a car, I mean, a letter. I got the letter stating that, you know, due to lack of use, uh, you know, you'll no, no longer have access to this credit card. And I'm going to be honest with you, that really bothered me. That one bothered me more than the Valley National Bank card because I was a member since 1990 and it looked good on my credit report having that. Uh, long history of credit, 28 years. But people, we just got to realize that the banks are in the business of making money. You know, they rely on those high interest rates that they charge us to make the money. So Valley and Chase weren't making any money with me, even though I think they were. I was paying down the debt. <laughs> you know, the debts that I had in those two cards. Uh, I finished both. I finished the Chase debt, I think, in 2017. And I think uh, in 2018, I finished the Valley National B Bank card. Um, so, you know, it, it just bothers me because, again, you know, it, it, it's like they're forcing you to use it to run up debt so they could, you know, fill up their coffers with uh, tons of money, you know, especially those high interest rates. I get these new uh, balance transfer cards in the mail from Wells Fargo, Bank of America, uh, TD Bank, and some of these are outrageous. Like you have to use the card within 12 months and pay everything off because the interest rates will go up to 12, 13, 14%. Um, so anyway, so it's, it's, it really sucks. And I have to say it again because I'm really pissed off that I lost the Chase card, most of all because of the long credit history I have with them. But like I said, I want to, you know, it is what it is. There's nothing I could do about it unless I would call them and say, hey, listen, I'll start using it. But I don't want to. You know, I just wanted to use it for emergency, for business purposes, whatever card I had. I didn't want to use it just for um, just to spend it, just to have it. I, I felt that it was unnecessary. I got a debit card for that. So um, g getting back to this article. Right. And by Lindsay Consco, as she wrote it in January of 2018. So, and this is what she says. I'll just read a little bit of the article. Credit card canceled due to inactivity. This is what you need to know. And then she goes on. Having a card account closed by, uh, by the issuer can hurt your credit in the future. Use cards regularly to avoid a repeat. Again, I don't want to use the card just to have it, just for the hell of it. Because to me, you know... One thing leads to another, and before you know it, you got $5,000 spent on that car, and you don't know why. All of a sudden, you look at your bank statement, and you bought it on doodads. And what doodad is, look at Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or doodad is an unnecessary expense that you uh, use the card on. So, um, and I wanted to uh, talk about the article. Like I said, I'll definitely post it up. And... And of course, one of the questions are, are credit card companies allowed to do this? And, as, and she says, yes, card issuers are permitted to cancel your credit card for a lot of reasons, inactivity being one of them. What's more, credit card companies aren't required to give any notice that they're closing your account. Although the Credit Card Act of 2009 says creditors must give customers 45 days notice prior 
uh, I'm sorry, 45 days notice of major changes to the terms of their accounts. Well, I don't remember receiving one from from Valley National Bank. Um, I got one from Chase. I definitely remember that. And I read it and I should have kept the letter. So at least I could have uh, read it out loud to you guys. But, you know, it is what it is. I, I, like I said, I threw it out because I was so uh, upset that I got, I, I, I lost that card. But anyway, um, what they want you to do is use the card because they make them, they make their money off the interest from us, you know, 12, 13, 14%. And unfortunately it is what it is. We have to use the card in order for them to make the money. What can we do? I don't know. You know, that's a good question. You know, I lost those two cards. I still got a couple of other cards that I have, but you know, I'm at a dilemma here because you know, it can happen again. I have a Chase account and I have a card that I owe a few thousand bucks and I'm, gonna, I'm ready to pay that off soon. I might end up losing that card for inactivity. So we're, we're at, a, as they say, a catch-22. Damn if we do and damn if we don't. So I think that's, a, that's a, um, something that as, as a consumer or as a business owner, we have to realize that we have to use these cards in order to maintain our, our uh, a good standing with the banks. You know, and um, once you realize, you know, if you could, you know, always keep tabs of what you're spending, what are you using it for, maybe you could control your spending and that's is going to be the key. You know, keeping a balance sheet of what you, what you have and what you spend. Because it, it, you can go out of control in any minute with a credit card. You know that. I know that. I've done it before. I would spend money on, uh, years and years ago when I first got the credit card. I would buy, you know, a pair of socks on a, on a credit card, you know. So I believe me, I learned my lesson. If I'm going to use any credit cards that I have left, it's going to be for uh, business purposes only. So, but... Um, once you realize what you, what you, you know, have that spreadsheet of, of your balances, uh, what you have available, and what your interest rates, and there's calculators all over the place, which I'll put on the show notes if I remember, <laughs> but believe me, I'll try, and you'll see how, uh, you know, you could calculate your ex- expenses and just um, keep tabs on it, you know, before you know it, it just disappears. It, it happened to me. I lost two credit cards. So anyway, folks, um, I'll put on the show notes, like I said, I'll definitely put the, about the news about NYCHA, and I'll definitely put the article uh, courtesy of Lindsay Consco about the you know, credit card being canceled. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash peer peer real estate and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Download, download the title for free and start listening. Believe me, it's that easy. So go to audibletrial.com slash peer, the number two peer real estate. And before I go, just a couple of things. Please go to peer to peer real estate.com. That's peer to number two peer real estate.com. Check out our past show. Check out our blog. Check out our, our free resource page that we have. A lot of, it, a lot of the uh, postings I have on the resource page is free. Some is pay. Uh, no affiliates. Not yet. I'll let you know when I do. But um, I try to keep the, the blog and the resource page uh, up to date as much as possible. Also, if you go to, to iTunes and look for us at Peter Peer Real Estate Podcast, please subscribe, leave a review, tell us how we can make this show better. Um, I'm always open to suggestions, even from, from uh, close friends and family. So uh, I'm always trying to improve the show. I'm trying to make it a little bit more New York-based. Uh, there's a lot of things happening here in the New York real estate market that I'm, I'm going to talk about over the next couple of months. We're going to talk about retail. We're going to talk about the Wall Street area. We're going to talk about gentrification of Harlem and so on. So uh, stay tuned for that. Anyway, before I go, just remember, guys, and I always talk about this as my outro for every show and my ending. Do not give up on your dreams. Go for yours. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. Whatever they think about you is none of your business. Uh, if these people are your so-called friends or family, they should support you. In whatever endeavor you want to get into, whether it's a career or a business, okay? Just keep on keeping on. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. On behalf of Peer to Peer Real Estate, I'm Willie Morales. Until next time, thanks, everybody, and have a great, great day. Bye.